Let's talk about the film Adults in the Room. And I remember back in 2017, you told us the book of the same name got its title from the then head of the IMF. And the current head of the European Central Bank because the revolving, revolving doors continue to revolve. Yes, there was a moment when uh, um, she made a statement which I thought was very apt. She said, we need adults in the room in order to reach an agreement. And my uh, purpose, the reason why I wrote the book, was to expose how the so-called adults were behaving or misbehaving inside the rooms of power. So it's a story about Greece and about Europe, but I do believe that it's also a universal story about insiders uh, misbehaving and doing things on behalf of those who put them there, of their electors, against the interests of the electors. LNL on RN, and my guest is uh, Giannis Varoufakis. OK, let's talk more about the movie. I've admired uh, Costa Gravis since, well, Z, which I think is, is probably his towering masterpiece, Missing is another, but he's made about a dozen very powerful films on politics. He's a political director, but at the same time, he's a storyteller. When I resigned uh, the Ministry of Finance in Greece, uh, a few days later, of course, it was a, a, a very tumultuous and uh, difficult period. Uh, we just surrendered, effectively. It's you know, like uh, your own government having thrown the towel in. I received a text message from Costa Gavras, whom I didn't know. And he said, my name is Costa Gavras. I'm a filmmaker. You probably don't know who I am. I thought, yeah, right. I've been observing you or what you've been going through over the last five months and I want this story to be my last movie. And I thought, oh my, oh my God. And then he described the movie. He said it will be done along the lines of 12 angry men, people, you know, men in a room, which is more or less what it was, if you accept uh, Christine Lagarde, who's the only woman there, really. Uh, it, it will be a movie about Greece, but it will be a universal movie about how a Europe that has lost its soul concentrated only on profits and banking crisis, um, destroyed a, a people. And this is exactly the movie that he ended up making, even though we worked for four years together. I was working on my book, on my book and he was simultaneously writing his script. Over the decades, he's produced his own films again and again. He's managed somehow to fund them, usually wildly controversial films that uh, were telling things that people didn't want to hear or that officials didn't want to here on both sides of what used to be the Iron Curtain. Is that still the case? Does he still produce as well as direct? I, absolutely. At this point, it is incumbent upon me to mention a remarkable woman, Michelle Ray Gavras. Michelle is Costas' wife, who is the producer. You should dedicate a whole program to her, not to Costa, to her. She is a, a force of nature. Just to give you an example, she was... Um, um, obviously a very striking young woman. She was a model for Elle or for one of those French uh, magazines and she had enough of doing that by the age of 18. And then she uh, wandered around the world, um, in the end becoming exceptionally politicised and left-wing. Um, so she went to Saigon during the Vietnam War and um, had herself arrested by the Viet Cong in order to go over to the other side. Um, when, wow. when she got out of that, she rushed to Greece, after having gotten together with Costa, she rushed to Greece to help Panagoulis, who is one of the great resistance heroes during the Greek fascist dictatorship, trying to help him escape from prison. So this is the producer of the film. Costa and Michel together are a formidable duo. What, what, a, what a story. But Costa is uh, French-Greek, is he not? <laughs> Uh, he's a Greek that, during the Civil War, saw no future for himself. His left-wing village parents and so on were decimated. Um, and he, like many other Greeks at the time, and some famous ones, um, escaped to the West, to Europe, as they used to call it. He ended up in France, more or less accidentally, and he became embedded, and he's exceptionally... Um, grateful to the way that France embraced him. I remember when you told me about the, the prospect of the film, I thought, what an extraordinary honour to have a film made about you, A, B, to have a film made about you by, by Costa, and C, to have him see it as his last film. It is, um, what can I say, overwhelming. Um, 
I'll just describe a scene to you, you know, one of the highlights of my life. Uh, when he completed the first copy of the movie, he asked me to fly to Paris to see it uh, in order to comment before the final cut. And we went to the dungeon in their house, uh, the Rue Saint-Jacques. Uh, they have a dungeon where they have a big screen and, you know, they do all the editing and stuff. And there, is a, there was a big sofa, five-seater, and they sat me on my own in the middle. And there were two armchairs behind me, elevated, one for Costa and one for Michelle. And they were watching me watch the movie uh, because they wanted to see how I would, I would react. Now, at that moment, I thought, now I think I can die. Once I've experienced this, um, the honor is so great that uh, I can live with that honor for the rest of my days. I've often been uh, lampooned by satirists. I've seen many images of myself being sent up by uh, a long list of, of famous actors going back 60, you know, 40 years. But uh, I would find it very hard to look at a serious portrait of myself without a sense of mortification. Do you see yourself? Do you recognise yourself? I do, because Christos Lulis, who played me, was remarkable at the way he captured me. It was very difficult to find somebody who would speak English like I do, uh, and Greek the way I do. And he caught the moment very well. But, Philip, this is not a movie about me. I'd never see it as a movie about me. I don't see the book as a book about me. This, I'm an accidental politician. I would never, ever have imagined of you know, a political life uh, if it was not for the wholesale bankruptcy of the Greek state and the Greek people. And it was a result of commenting on it and commenting on it and coming up with proposals of what they should be doing instead of what they were doing that led to the moment when one young man who was to be prime minister a few months later came to me and said, OK, time, time to you know, put up or shut up. Come and do it. And I found myself in that. So for me, I was not the center of it. It was the people who were in the center of it. The people, the taxi drivers, you know, the homeless people who were coming to me and they were saying to me, Philip, you know, we're not asking you for anything. We're finished. Just make sure that those who are on the edge of the precipice and are about to fall where we are, don't fall. 